From the sanctuary of Coral Ridge Church in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Welcome to The Joy of Music. Featuring today a very special Easter program, a passion symphony, O Sacred Head Now Wounded. Composed and performed by the First Lady of the Organ, Diane Bish, and narrated by Dr. D. James Kennedy. Now, Miss Diane Bish. The Easter story is one that has always meant very much to me personally because it was Christ that died and rose again that I might know life and know it more abundantly. Christ has changed my life and that is the reason I have written this Passion Symphony on O Sacred Head Now Wounded. I have tried to tell in this symphony the powerful events of Christ's passion and resurrection. I have tried through music to show the soldiers as they scorned at Christ. I have tried to express the pounding of the nails as they went into Christ's hands on the cross. And then the earthquake and those very powerful events that happened when Christ died for us. And the awesome silence that followed when the centurion said, surely this was the Son of God. And the freshness of an Easter morning when the trumpets of the organ herald the fact that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. This is a powerful story because it is meant for you and for me. Christ died that we might have life and have life eternal. I want to give a very special thanks to the senior minister of the Coral Ridge Church, Dr. D. James Kennedy, for narrating this Passion Symphony. O sacred head now wounded, with grief and shame weighed down, now scornfully surrounded with thorns thine only crown. O sacred head, what glory, what bliss till now was thine. Yet though despised and gory, I joy to call thee mine. And when the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him unto Pontius Pilate, 
the governor. And Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. When he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? And they cried out, Barabbas! Barabbas! And Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called the Christ? They all say unto him, let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why, what evil hath he done? And they cried out the more, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! The soldiers of the governor took Jesus, and when they had stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe, they plaited a crown of thorns, and they put it on his head, and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spat upon him, and took the reed, and smote him on the head. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again unto them. But they cried out, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! Therefore came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple garment, and Pilate said unto the people, Behold your king! And they cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Crucify him! <laughs> and 
And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place which is called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha. And when they were come to a place which is called Golgotha, there they crucified him. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And one of the malefactors which were hanged said unto him, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. What language shall I borrow to thank thee, dearest friend, for this thy dying sorrow, thy pity without end? O oh, make me thine forever, and should I fainting be, Lord, let me never never outlive my love for thee.
the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks were rent, and the graves were opened. What thou, my Lord, hath suffered was all for sinners' gain. Mine, mine was the transgression, but thine the deadly pain. Lo, here I fall, my Savior, tis I deserve thy place. Look on me with thy favor, vouchsafe to me thy grace.
Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were much afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, for he is risen, as he said.
The Passion Symphony, as performed tonight, has been a simple musical narrative on the death and resurrection of Christ. This is such a powerful story because it took place for you and for me. Because Christ died, we can trust in Him and have life eternally. Salvation is a free gift. It is something that Christ came to give us. It is something that we can neither earn or deserve. But if we will but trust in Him and commit our lives to Him, we can know that freshness as an Easter morning and that newness of life that only Christ can give us. This is the real story of Easter. And I hope that each of you know the joy that Christ can bring into your life.